This is a World War II U.S. Army Field Ration CB unit and the original first generation C ration accessory packet. One 24 hour set of the C ration consisted of six cans and one accessory packet. The cans broke down to three M units or meat units and then three B units or bread units. And by late 1942, the B units evolved from only having coffee to also having lemonade powder and cocoa beverage powder. This is a breakfast bee in it with coffee with an early 1943 date of production. Used to have a key for M unit enclosed by reducing the production requirements by 50% they took out the extra key and it now says save key to open M unit. So just the one key. An accessory packet with cigarettes, toilet paper, gum, matches, and water purification tablets packed by Charms Company, Bloomfield, New Jersey. These were first introduced to sea rations in 1944. Instructions for the use of water purification tablets. The tablets in the small vial are to be used for purification of drinking water. One halazone tablet is sufficient for one pint of ordinary water. If water is greatly polluted, use two tablets. Allow water to stand 30 minutes before drinking. Check out this paper laminate material. It would give some weather resistance and potential weather proofing to this pack. I mean, it's pretty state of the art for, for the era. Well, there's only one thing left to do before we open these up. All right, so let's get this out on your tray. Nice, in case. Let's first start off with that B unit. Pull off that key. Lift that tab. Nice hiss. Wow, check that out. Nescafe. That is awesome. This one's still good too. Has a nice rattle to it. Wow, this can doesn't smell stale or off whatsoever. This was this thing was well stored. A little flecks of rust on the outside didn't mean anything. That's a good sign. When it smells like close to nothing, just a slight grain to the biscuits in there. So Nescafe coffee. Now in the original B units, the container for the coffee was actually a aluminum packet that held 0.36 ounces of coffee. That was an essential war material. So they switched over to these slip top containers like these here, Barrington Hall. So this was the the second design and they'd tape them shut and they were ineffective moisture would get inside of them they end up like that all right so then the sugar cubes check this out one is bleached paper and then two are unbleached paper sugar cubes and unlabeled interesting some are domino some are jack frost Various sugar cube brands. This is totally generic. Three sugar cubes and then three hard candies. We'll find out what flavors these are, but oh hey, check this out. This is almost like parchment paper, maybe glassine. Some sort of thing to separate the biscuits and protect them from the other components. Check that out. A little bit of scuffing on the bottom biscuit there. Some scuffing on the metal, but that's fine. Five biscuits. Look at the inside of that can. All right, and then the accessory packet. Wow, 
Ah, it just smells like old boot leather. That's awesome. Look at that. Chesterfield cigarettes. They satisfy. They definitely do. Milder, cooler, better taste. Liggett and Myers Tobacco Company. A little bit of loose tobacco in the pack there. Wrapped in cellophane. Man, that's so exciting. Probably DuPont brand cellophane. Big contractor for the uh, the era there. They were wrapping candy for charms and whatnot, providing cellophane. Look at that pack of Wrigley's PK. That looks brand new. Made of gum based sugar, corn syrup, softeners, and flavor. Made in the USA. Yeah, gum was in K rations. Cigarettes? They didn't have any C rations for the first five years they were producing them. I don't know what they were thinking. So let's see what else we got here. All right, look at that. Waldorf brand toilet paper. Made for the US Army by the maker of the Waldorf, a Scott tissue. Scott Paper Company, Chester, Pennsylvania. And it's not just some, some regular old toilet. This is, this is seriously some of the most valuable toilet paper on the planet. And it's in impeccable shape. Guys that make reproductions of these old rations look for those labels. You get a little book of matches and a small bottle of halazone. You get 12 halazone tablets. That is awesome. Look at that. The halazone was replaced with salt tablets in 1945. If you're in a malaria zone, keep your shirt on and your sleeves rolled down. Use mosquito repellent when out of doors between sunset and sunrise. Classic. So there you go. The only thing we're short on is the meat can, the meat unit. Those things hardly exist. The last one that sold was a bulge can that sold for 271 bucks. But you did heat your M units on this stove right here. The original United States Marine Corps, 1943. So this would be your M unit or meat unit. Right here would essentially be one meal. All right, so let's check out the coffee. They definitely didn't make it easy to open any of these containers. But that's good because it kept it airtight for 75 years. Check that out. Perfect, soluble coffee product. It's a very subtle coffee aroma. That is incredible right there. It's a 0.25 ounce portion. And really actually perfect for a full mess cup. It's not for only 8 ounces. And for 16, it's even too strong. Wow, that is a very fine granule. Different from the other kind I've seen. All right, and then the sugar cubes. I gotta try out a biscuit. Hmm. Yeah, it's perfectly normal. Yeah, it just has a nice whole grain, wholesome consistency, like some roughage to it. Not an overly processed grain. With a slight hint of rye. This coffee here. It smells really good. It has a lightly acidic diner coffee kind of aroma. Check it out, it's strong too. That's not overly watered down coffee. I mean, they, they give you a huge portion. It would make for a very strong 16 ounces or a, a pretty standard 24 ounces. Mmm, wow. Does indeed have a strong flavor. Just dunking the biscuit. That actually does a lot for this. These are relatively dry and thirst provoking, but they're not rancid at all. That's a plus. This coffee's way too hot. I need to let that cool down for a minute. In the meantime, check that out. Brock's or Brax candies. 
Oh, that's so cool. It's not even brittle. It's amazing. That is the most prevalent and delicious and kind of strong butterscotch candy. Oh, I just want to chew on it, but I know I can't. That is incredible. I've come across boiled sweets or hard candy, what have you, out of these B units where you could just bite right in and chew, but this is a nice slow burn kind of butterscotch hard candy. Oh wow, that's like perfect. It's not overly strong. The Nescafe blend here, that's different from the Barrington Hall blend. So this is on point. This is a Nescafe soluble coffee blend. It's about a 50-50 mixture of various soluble carbohydrates and then instant coffee. It's ever so slightly acidic, just a tinge of it. Not as much as like say coffee is in type one. Type two is very acidic. This here, it's extremely pleasant. It's it's so enjoyable. I, I just I want to keep drinking. I could drink it very fast. Since it's cooled down, dunk a biscuit and live it up. Perfect biscuits. They're not stale at all, but they don't always end up like that. I've come across some that were rancid, stale. It really is luck of the draw. Some of the early ones from 1941 had a fudge bar. Those fudge bars are never good, and they'll poison the rest of the components. This here, the hard candies, they don't do anything. They don't react with any of the other components. The Nescafe, no moisture got into that can. It's, it's a time capsule. Like stepping back three quarters of a century. So the B unit was preserved. That accessory packet looks on point too. You can tell by the gum. The gum's a great indicator. I mean like if there was moisture that got into that thing, you would you would know. The gum, the the toilet paper too would would be musty and this Nescafe is a much better, more palatable coffee blend, you know, soluble coffee blend than say that Barrington Hall. Barrington Hall was rough. It's a slight nutty undertone. Very mild roast. It's a perfectly dunkable biscuit. Nice whole grain. It doesn't break up when you're holding it in the coffee, so it's not like it crumbles off and turns into this weird bloaty in your coffee. That's never cool. Yeah, like, this is a dining experience, you know, you got biscuits, coffee, and hard candy. That, that butterscotch candy was amazing. Last bite. You go for this lime. It has a nice strong lime flavor. It's just an artificial lime. It hasn't turned or changed in any way. I'm going to save this one. All right, and then he's Chesterfields. Wow, that is so cool. Oh wow, they smell strong. You can smell that before even opening the thing. Look at those. That is incredible. Nine pack. Haven't seen a nine pack yet. No stains, nothing. They, they're in perfect shape. It smells like boot leather and some sort of old cologne or something. It's what's the most notable part of the dry pull? Definitely the boot leather, but it's not as strong and nauseating, thankfully. All right. Oh yeah. Check this out. Chesterfield. Hey, 
that's actually pretty good. It doesn't taste like boot leather. Little bits of tobacco. Yeah, it is dry. It's very dry. It's going to burn like a fuse out of an old cartoon, my guess. But it's really not bad. So the, the cigarette's not super notable. Dry, strong, bold, and kind of has a slight cedar flavor. It's not sweet. Thankfully, doesn't taste like how it smells. Like, it smells like boot leather and geraniums, which is like the worst nauseating kind of smell. I feel fortunate. Actually, come to think of it, the, the strongest cigarette I ever had was that Chelsea out of that K-Ration dinner. Speaking of rations, the predecessor to the C-Ration was the Reserve Ration, which was back during World War I. The Reserve Ration consisted of a pound of corned beef or salted bacon, get two eight-ounce tins of hard bread, a little over an ounce of ground coffee, about two and a half ounces of sugar, and like about a tenth of an ounce of salt. came out to about 3,200 calories. And after the war, the reserve ration was updated in 1920. And then again, in the late 20s. That one in the late 20s cost $1.12 per unit. That was a neat little tidbit. I couldn't find what the others cost, but then it was updated again in 1936. Then again in 1938. Then in 1939, it was officially redesignated as field ration type C. This thing is so strong, I feel like I just smoked two cigarettes, so I think I'm good on that. The cigarette was okay. The coffee, much better. Check out this, Wrigley's PK. I'm gonna save the label. Smooth wax paper. Looks like a little bit of moisture got to one. Seems fine. That real gum base. It's a little bit brittly. But wow, that's mild peppermint. Sorry to be gross, but look at that gum base. It's the real deal, the old kind. With real sugar, real flavor. That is the best chewing gum you could ever have. Literally, that is a magnificent time capsule. Both of them, the, the B unit and this accessory packet. Absolutely incredible. What an awesome experience. It's right here, I'm gonna save these, put them in a humidor, bring a little bit of life back into them. What a couple of amazing historic time capsules. I had fun sharing it with you guys. This is Steve 1989. I Hope you liked the video. I'll be coming back at you with something new. They're old. Alright, cool. See ya.